and we should be live. All right, what do you want me to draw? All right, doesn't look like anybody's here yet. So, hold on just a moment. We should be live. Hopefully somebody can test this out for me. Um, got to get some reference material. You know, these people who voted for me, y'all better shut up. What do we know about this creature here? Someone was supposed to be here for me to tell me about it. All right, that looks like that's what they found. Evan's lap. Evan's lap. Mr. Evanson. Uh, not really a lot of material to go on this Protohadros. I mean, we've got some paleo art. Some very different looking hadrosaurs. Those two skeletal's heads don't look anything alike. I mean, they're just there. It looks nothing like it. I don't know what this animal is. What is this? Starachosteria? Protohadros, huh? What's the best website for this? Yeah, nobody's gonna join, but that's all good. We're still gonna do a painting, as we said we were. I'm always up to help out. Nice rich babe, enchanted man. Tejas, speaking of which, if ain't gonna be nobody hanging, let's get some tunes going on. In honor of Texas, gonna get some dirty money from Omar Rodriguez Lopez. Enjoy some music, why don't you, kids? So, what do we have for Proto Hadros? We really gotta paint this thing. Non Hadrosaurid Iguanodontian. Basal member of the Hadrosauridae, so it's basal. So, we don't really know much about this creature. Right. Actually, I don't mind this piece. Uh, this is a pretty good piece of paleo art, really. It's a terrible JPEG quality. But, uh, let's see where some other people have kind of made this guy. Like There's really not too many images on this guy. Like stout. Try and be stout. Oh, all right. This works for me. So you just want to open these guys up and wrap work. Alright, so you open up your ref board, which is basically gonna float. Let's set up here. Ref board's just kinda gonna float there. Turn on this music so you guys can hear me. Um, okay, got him twice. Tomatosuchus. What is this thing called? 
Thelmatosaurus is actually what I'm using as a rep here. I don't know why that won't go away. I might need one here. Okay. So once you get a skeletal reference image, it's a good idea. Unless you know the anim anatomy of the creature really well, I don't think it's too bright. That's just my opinion, you know? What do I know? Um, I would recommend it if I were you. Okay, so I'm do new layer. And I'm gonna get a really light, kind of gray. I'm gonna use the, the number one brush. Just to get in some basic stuff. Alright. We got a horizon here. Soften it a little bit. Alright. Okie dokie. Now I'm gonna make a new layer. This is where I'm gonna start fidgeting around. Some, um, oh, I think I'm gonna fish around with some, um, comp, you know, some uh, compositions for position here, and uh, just make sure everything's good. Okay, we're good. So, I'm gonna do this animal. Protohadros. Alright. Let's put it about 50 cents. And at 50 cents, which I mean is. 50% can start to maybe conceive what a proto hadros would look like here. More dramatic. What was this thing, man? Now, they're these guys that have something called the Copper Lights podcast. And they're a good group of guys. Uh, definitely entertaining to listen to and have some good stuff to say. And they have an episode about paleo art that I was listening to the other day. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, they had some good things to say, I think. And uh, I'm pretty sure a couple of them are artists. Would love to give them up, get them on the show. Um, you're on the paleo art channel where paleo art is what's important. Uh, I only have an hour tonight, so I'm probably not going to have time to um, do much of a background, so I'm going to try to do generic. I'm not really sure what kind of plant life lives with this proto hadros fellow. Protohadros before the Hadros. Before they had Rose, you know what I mean? Mm. It's some pretty good size arms, so if it, if it wanted to rear up, you'd really have to kind of. really have to engage those legs. I'm gonna go back in and do another once over on all this as well. This is just one of many. The best one will be the big, become the biggest. I wanna look at this guy's like arm structure, so. 
just kind of get held there in an upright posture. Moving? It's not a whole lot to do. It doesn't look like it has a very long neck. So I'll tell you one thing I got wrong here. Is, uh, the back stays up higher. As long as you see like these mistakes earlier, early on, you can totally fix them. Um, not sure who did the skeleton, skeletal, but they definitely have a lot more uh, of your dorsal torso kind of an arch going on the back over the hips. I still missed it, actually. It's hard painting on film. Anybody could be watching me right now and be like, I did it. That's all gonna change. Things are gonna change for me. I'm gonna have to do it. I don't know what y'all think. So, you know, come back to that guy. It's warm up time for a new layer. Mm, how's this guy doing? He's hanging out in Texas a long, long time ago. A Texas that was nothing like a modern day Texas. And I was just there, guys. I'll tell you, man, these duck bills were pretty cool for a herbivore. <laughs> I mean, really, all, all the dinosaurs were pretty cool to me, but. Yeah, we'll get this guy all the way down on all fours. Not quite that beefy, you know. They seem to be fairly flat. Just going by the skeletal bone. And of course, you know, that's all we know about these 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 amazing creatures. Beyond time. Don't cheat too much, but cheat all the time is what I say. As long as you don't cheat too, cheat too much, you'll be fine. Cheat a little bit, though. Don't cheat like a shitload, like I do. Oh, what a weird little neck you have, creature. Proto had this. So even though everybody dipped out on actually coming to the session. I know there's probably some people that just watch this. Just kind of terrified of the reactions. Actually, I'm not. Why would I be terrified of someone who's doing this? I'm just terrified of goodness, goodness, goodness. I gotta promote the show. Is this what you look like, man? I hope not. It's 
Alright, and that one, that's like a background animal. That's terrible. So what I'm going to do is copy it, transform it, make it little, and then I'm automatically going to get my next layer here, I hope. Deselect it, paste it. Now on this guy, So I'm going to start working at this place, uh, hopefully soon, called Painting, Painting, with a twist. And it's where a bunch of people get drunk and paint, and like, treat it like a party, and they like, hang out and paint. What do you guys think about that? I mean, you're not working there. Leave a comment. Then I'll tell you what I think about it. Oh, what a weird, weird animal. I am digging this one a little bit better, but I'm going to still do a few more. I think I keep these quick. I do think, oh, no, this is, the, this is definitely the best of a lot. I'm digging it. You just, I mean, I find usually if I give myself a little time to warm up, and don't just noodle forever on some bad comp. bad to start off with pro tip time if it's bad to start off with it's not going to get any better as you keep going Make sure you don't do that like if your head's too small don't make it bigger just kidding you can do a little things but honestly you can do whatever you want i do little things you phrase that you do whatever you do whatever you want man but uh, I've seen a few, a few things that have kind of helped me out. It's like the Matabarasaurus. What a cool critter. So someone actually studied this guy. You know, see, I need, I need you here right now, man. Maybe, maybe catch you on the flip. Maybe not, but you know, these are the kind of people want to come hang out. Somebody that'll jaw about what, about some more detail about these bad boys. trying to remember to be really sensitive. It's actually got kind of small feet, but I think I'm gonna make it a little bigger and wider. And yeah. Might be alright. and quadrupedal her it Brachiosaurus. interesting beasts you know so just take time developing your your image get the anatomy in don't paint like I'm painting I'm not really painting the right way have enough reference but this is just sort of a test podcast um 
I'll do kind of a better job of what I'm talking about with using reference uh, next time. There's actually maybe a crowd too. Friday afternoon is definitely not a good time for my podcast, but whatever. Kelly Wark channel needs to get a better time. Protohadros. Totally taking shape, man. I can really see it happening. Yeah, it's not great, but it's a sketch, you know what I mean? It's just something to start with. It's got a little more tail, too. not heard of Ref Board, definitely recommend checking that out. It's nice because your picture just floats there, it doesn't have to be part of the shop. Which is really nice. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of light this guy a little bit more here. It's kind of like he's eating another little dinosaur right there. It's pretty funny. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pull out and kind of want to fix this composition a little bit. Um, a few things about it actually. Try to make it a little more artistic looking when we go in to add color. I could fix some lighting things right now. Nostril in there. We'll zoom in a little bit for that for that part of the detail. Yeah, the hip is at least that high. crisp light edge on that up here. All right. No more chowing down, my friend. I don't know. I think it'll work. Uh, it looks all right. It needs, uh, it needs some work. It needs quite a bit of work, but I think I can make this happen. I want to give it a proper face. So, so yeah, I went to SVP, what an experience, uh, it was pretty cool, it's definitely one of the coolest uh, conferences that I've ever been to, met all kinds of people, we're really about the halfway point, so, I gotta do something cool with this guy, he's looking too much like a cone head, so I gotta go into cheat mode, so now you see all my little tricks. My tricks are pretty stupid. I wouldn't recommend doing them. Fix this thing's orbit. Should come up here. I think it is. And smurge that layer down. If you could tell what I did there, good for you. If not, it's really, really simple. I mean, it should not be too hard to figure out. I like that neck a little bit more. More cheating time. Just because it's it's quicker this way. I just learned over the years. Um, I mean, in 
some sense, it's not that much worse than moving the brush around with your pencil. I mean, this is just stuff I would have fixed with the brush on the eraser tool, because I can, I can actually sculpt it a little bit better this way. But, like, make sure that you can also draw it if you need to. I'm really doing this as a shortcut. You know, I would want to be able to draw this to essentially erase and redraw it right. Now, if you're noticing stuff like, oh, man, this, uh, this is not making sense to me. I don't feel like that looks right. The angle looks a little funky on it. Hey, you know, ask a friend. First thing I say. But, uh, you know, you gotta fix it. You might as well redraw it. It's kind of what. But, um, it's generally just kind of my mode of thinking on it, really. Um, so here I'm using Liquify. Um, don't overuse it. I mean, again, make sure that you can draw this. Just sometimes I think, honestly, I think it's easier to draw on paper, have my mark go where I really want it to go, than it is using like a tablet. Although you can get all kinds of cool effects and refinements and stuff when you're digital. But um, I don't know that that makes up at all for, you know, paint school and things like that. But, uh, yeah, it's being able to do stuff like this to your piece. But you can do this when you draw too. You just have to do more iterations to redraw it over and over. Scarasaurus. Halloweenosaurus. See, now I could like, I can take votes for color and all kinds of good stuff, guys. do shadows with zero hardness at really dark colors and just slowly shade them in. Um, I do about 10%. Oh man, well that's good to know. It told me I was starting a podcast that I had already started. Just remember to turn that off next time. We are halfway through, everybody. So thank you for joining us. You are watching the Paleo Art channel. All Paleo Art, all the time. Um, I'm Stevie Moore, founder of the Paleo Art channel. Where we're dedicated to the oldest art on the planet. Art of old people. of pure bliss and sometimes I'll turn that layers opacity opacity because it's opaque right so it's opacity what's the opacity of that so that's how people talk where I'm from I'm from Kentucky share the last Kentubby kicks ass I live in a town where, like, you're not cool unless you, like, ride bikes and get a lot of tattoos and stuff and have a mustache. It's also hip to be, hip to be square. It's hip to be a slumlord and to pretend to be the poor in my county. I'm just saying that for posterity's sake. I don't think it really affects me. But I mean, there's, there's some pretty hip folk around here. Okay, so I just wanna go in and clean up the legs. So let's just do like a review here. Do we have the posture right? I mean, I don't, want, I don't really wanna make it run or anything, but honestly, I think it could benefit from pulling back a little bit. So again, do my little trick. make it a little wider there. I do think I like that better. 
we all think. And you also get to see more of that in the book, too, coming out. So. I think that's just better. And all of this would be much darker. So we are listening to Omar Rodriguez Lopez. This is old money. Because he is Soy Peas. Texas was pretty cool, folks. I'd go back. It's a nice place. Relatively nice place. I mean, wasn't so bad. Had a pretty cool roommate. Uh, he's a trooper, too. He really kind of got a little sick, but he, he toughed through it. Was not a complainer. I, I was more wussy on it than anything. And you do meet a lot of people. Um, I would definitely go to SVP. Um, there's, it would be cool. Paleoarch took more of a, a attention, I guess, so to speak. I think I'm going to have to start doing some more legitimate and scientific illustration. And not just paintings. But hey, you got to do what you got to do. So, you know, I just want to make sure I save this plenty of time for camo and stuff. It's this guy, concept artist guy, whose work I really like. His name is Jonathan Cow or Co. Co. I'll give out a shout to him. Um, so, we were talking earlier about people who, um, people who are artists, but, uh, Um, you know, they're trying to get the anatomy part down, they're trying to understand how the shapes and, and the skeleton kind of, um, is all put together and what the best way to draw that in what order. Um, still trying to learn that, but, uh, it looks like his drawings... He really gets very geometric with them and very um, shapely. And that's very handy, I think, to kind of learn them under those terms because if anything, any object, its anatomy, its shape, it's nothing but a larger piece made up of smaller pieces. And that's almost a universal. So, you know, anytime you're going to be drawing something that's appearing in front of you, sometimes you're going to be drawing things that are totally made up out of your head, which I'm kind of doing. Not totally. I've got, I've definitely got them chained down to a reference, but this isn't around me. It's no one's ever seen it. It's kind of an interesting paradox. What I love about Paleo Art, I think a lot of people love it. Um, but, um, You know, look at some of Jonathan Cowell's work and the way he uses geometry. And uh, I think you'll see what I mean. You know, he breaks everything down into shapes. This is it's something that I should have done working on this piece. But, uh, yeah, I didn't. Um, shoulda. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Maybe next time. Next time on. Yeah, they're not really this grass along. Mine kind of delicate. Well, I don't like shrink wrapping my dinosaurs, but I, I think some of them might have been sort of shrink wrapping. It really depended on the animal. Um, hadrosaurs, I'm not so sure about.
across the sky a little bit. That's what we got to go on. That's very Iguanodontian. I must say. I thought they were kind of horsey. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Kind of also nothing like a horse. But. They were galloping or anything like that. Such good news. I think I might give him more beef down there, actually. More uh, beef up the jaw a little bit. So I think these guys probably need some beef today. And some abilities. Special abilities, you know. It's been a long day. I worked. Hey, excuses, whatever. I'm going to do this painting. That's more than I usually do. I think in the future, you know, I'd like to do some legit work for you guys. You can actually paint stuff. It's kind of legit. This is sort of a copy. This terrified look in its eye. I like to make them look birdish, but who knows? We got 20 minutes left. like committing a huge sin here. I'm doing a puppet on this guy. But I think I might have viewed some of my horrible fears. And I wish there was a way to flip the flipboard. If you're not into the Omar Rodriguez Lopez, I'm here to let you know. Good stuff. For me, it's time to change it up. Uh, I know everybody's not into that weird stuff. Let's go a little bit in there, but not really. It kind of stops and then there's the up there. Well, we'll listen maybe on the other side. It's definitely more fun doing this, I think, when you've got other people to talk to. But I'm not exactly afraid of talking alone. But it doesn't mean it's fun either. Okay. But, you know, I'll do it occasionally. It's a video for YouTube. If you guys ever have any questions, man, just make a comment. I'll see it. I'll, I'll get back to you. Eh, that's not the right. I'm not leaving that. If it doesn't look good, don't leave it. Don't be like, oh, it was halfway there. No. I mean, even on this terrible drawing, I don't want to. This two minute cartoons drawing. Don't use these brushes. 
except when you're doing paintings in like five minutes. can use it sparsely. I really do. But I'm not a fan. Like I'd love to just like go over all this with it. Just cut it all out. But I'm running out of time. See how artificial it looks? I don't like it. So I kind of want to go in and, and scratch it out. Um... Let's do about 60. Throw some Kitno fibers on this dude. I ain't gonna pick no fibers. Okay, we have little Bilbo Baggins arms. The problem I have with this brush is that it, uh, it leaves like it'll it'll sort of slightly change direction on you and mess up your uh, like intended area of placement and leave like this horizontal or this like piece of fur just kind of floating out on its own. <coughs> So with some Picno fibers, I think we can kind of make that work. Let's just give him some... Uh, said basil, so, you know. Again, it was a long day. I was sitting there, I couldn't paint anything. What would be a cool symbol for these guys? What would be cool? That's definitely not cool with him at all, so. Hmm. Maybe just the, the stripies. Stripes. Oh man, I do like them. I don't think they're from Texas though. Where are they from? I don't even know, honestly. So I've got the feathers set at about 60%. This animal definitely looks way too derpy. So it's gonna get. Uh, as soon as I get a better brush here, <laughs> the derpiness shall fade. So we'll just do the arms. I cannot let this derpasaurus just continue. a little better. Yeah, you don't want to let it get too, too funky looking down there. Okay with them having the dark fuzz though. Yeah, it kind of will do that to you. Come out too far. You gotta kind of go back in. Kind of give them a little shave down. But um, I am pretty happy with this brush. And this brush is totally, you guys can have a copy if you want. It's not that big. It's not like a seafarer or anything. It's not that cool. Okay, I give him some white up top. The old man. No, 
now I feel like the scales they sort of mix in a little bit. Now I do want to do a little bit of something about this dirt here before I continue with that brush. I'm just gonna leave that brush on. I'm gonna go back to the number one brush. It's just way too derpy looking and horsey. Very much too horse like. got about 12 minutes so I, I need to like make this happen kind of really quickly too this brush the shade is a two whoa <sighs> don't actually paint like me paint like yourself but like I like to paint, you know. I mean, if you guys ever want to watch me, but I'll be painting anyway. It's like I do this for a living or something. I don't know what's going on? All right, it's a little less derpy. Derp. Hey, hey guys, I'm a dinosaur. I'm a sore, sir, sirs. Mmm, Duckasaurus. for some tree sombras. It's hard to paint an animal in such a short amount of time. Definitely a challenge. Eight minutes. Eight minutes, kids. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pull this off. guy yet. I'm just gonna leave him woolly. much brush time. So 
Smudge Rush will take you Evan. Yes, it will. Eat turkey. Eat turkey. There are guests, I'll sing. I'm just kind of finishing it out with the smudge brush, just trying to clean up mistakes and goofy areas. Probably need to go back to my fur brush that I was using, or maybe, maybe I should get a different fur brush. Hang on. It does a vertical stroke on you. You lose time there. Um, gosh, it almost just looks worse when you match it up with um, something nearby that, you know, if you got perpendicular stuff going on. It really just looks even worse. My advice, stay away from making those kinds of marks find that I really got to control my stroke if, <laughs> if I want to get that to work right because it's hard um, if it does a little turnaround on you because you have to set the brush setting on follow direction you know if you want to make it useful and you can kind of get some curve on it like I'm doing there you know but uh, like I said you really got to watch I'm getting the tunnel and all, so uh, you know, I, I can't do too much of that. These brushes are huge time savers. Alright, I'm really getting near the end. And I'm not unhappy with this. I'm not exactly happy with it either. It's a pain. And at this point, like, I would hazard uh, doing any liquefies or warping or anything um, you can do a little bit but like I wouldn't ever recommend like totally changing around the, the nature of pose or anything of that sort because you're gonna end up with a really funky looking model if you do Boy, was I thirsty. Cheers. 
two minutes. I'm not gonna work on this any after those two minutes are over either. See, that didn't help me one bit. That cost me time. Shut the shadow play. Just assume they don't have. Oh man, I got one minute. One. Something to this guy's like leg. There's something down here. Oops, wrong layer. more time to write that or read that or paint that or smell that or whatever. Okay, I think my buzzer's about to go off here. Alright. Yeah. Buzzer's about to go off, Stevie. And so this has been the Paleo Art Channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, PaleoArt Channel on Twitter, or Studio Spectre. Don't forget to leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. Put in a request for a critter to paint. There's a lot of them out there. I'm totally up for doing some of them. And I hope you guys will be up to uh, hang out again me paint some more of them. And everybody have a good night. I think this one's, I'm going to call this sketch done. Inktober and all. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time. Again, uh, I think I want to make that a little bit more clear. So we got Paleo art Chanel and that will work both on YouTube and Twitter You can also follow me at Studio Spectre since you made it to the end of this video. And also a big thanks to everybody for watching. We'll be back next week. You got any ideas? Let me know see me paint any specific creatures let me know and I will 
paint them for you. All right? Or any situations or any, anything you want. Uh, but it has to be paleo because it's the paleo art channel, obviously. Let me get my cooler set up. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.